Today, we're diving deep into the fascinating world of personal finance and the psychology of money. If you've ever wondered why some people seem to effortlessly accumulate wealth while others struggle, you're in the right place. In this video, we're going to explore 18 powerful lessons that can transform your relationship with money and set you on the path to financial success. So, let's get started. Number 1. Money's True Value Money is a tool, not an end. At its core, money is a medium of exchange that enables trade and simplifies transactions. While it's easy to become fixated on accumulating wealth, it's essential to remember that money's value lies in what it can help you achieve, not as an end. Money's worth is found in its use, not its possession. 2. Time Value of Money Today's dollar is worth more than tomorrow's. A foundational principle in finance, money's time value recognizes that money's purchasing power decreases over time due to factors like inflation. Thus, the value of a dollar today is more than its value in the future, highlighting the importance of timely and wise investments. Fiat currencies are designed to lose purchasing power yearly at about a 2% inflation rate. This happens as more and more currency is created and put into the monetary system. This inflation also accelerates as governments monetize deficit spending and banks create credit for borrowers. A 2023 dollar will most likely be worth less than a 2024 dollar due to the depreciating time value of money. 3. Risk and Reward Higher potential returns come with higher risk. In the financial world, returns are the reward for taking risks. Generally, higher potential returns are associated with higher levels of risk. Finding a balance that aligns with your risk tolerance and financial goals is essential. 4. Opportunity Cost Every financial decision has a trade-off. Every choice you make involves a trade-off. If you decide to spend money on a luxury item, you forego the opportunity to invest or spend that money elsewhere. Recognizing these trade-offs can lead to more informed decisions. 5. Emotional Investing Letting emotions drive investment decisions often leads to poor outcomes. Emotions can cloud judgment, leading to impulsive decisions that may not align with long-term financial objectives. Separating emotions from investment strategies is crucial, basing decisions on data and long-term perspectives. 6. Frugality and savings. Living below your means creates a foundation for wealth. While it's tempting to elevate your lifestyle with every pay increase, consistently spending less than you earn provides a cushion for emergencies and opportunities for investment. The gap between the money you spend and the money you earn creates your ability to save and invest. Lifestyle creep destroys your ability to save and invest as you raise your spending as your income increases, and are never left with extra money to build wealth. 7. Diversification. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Diversifying investments across different assets or sectors reduces the risk associated with any single investment's poor performance. Diversification creates the opportunity to have more chances at significant returns and also lowers risk. It's a strategy to mitigate losses and optimize returns. 8. Inflation, the silent eroder of purchasing power. Prices generally rise over time, reducing the value of money. Protecting and growing wealth requires investments that outpace inflation, ensuring purchasing power isn't eroded. Converting currency to investments in stocks, commodities, precious metals, businesses, and real estate hedges you against the inflation rate. When the value of money goes down, the value of assets goes up. 9. The role of debt, useful when managed, destructive when it controls you. Debt can be a tool, for example, buying a home or starting a business. However, unchecked or high interest debt can quickly become unmanageable, emphasizing the importance of responsible borrowing. Debt is best used for acquiring cash flowing assets, not to get into payments with owning depreciating consumer liabilities. 10. Behavioral biases. Humans are not always rational with money. From herd mentality to confirmation bias, humans often act irrationally when dealing with money. Recognizing and understanding these biases can help in making more objective financial decisions. 11. Financial education. Knowledge is the best investment. Financial literacy empowers individuals to make informed decisions about their money. Continued learning about finance and investments pays dividends in the long run. 12. Liquidity and accessibility. Having accessible funds in emergencies is essential. While investments are crucial, having liquid assets for unforeseen expenses or emergencies ensures financial stability. It's always wise to have a safety net. The most important fundamental in finance is liquidity. 13. The importance of planning. Failing to plan is planning to fail. Setting clear financial goals and developing strategies to reach them ensures consistent progress toward achieving your financial objectives. Without a financial plan, 
you can't measure progress or success with money. 14. Sunk cost fallacy, past investments shouldn't influence future financial decisions. Just because you've spent money on something in the past doesn't mean you should continue investing in it, especially if it's not yielding positive results. It's essential to make decisions based on current and future value, not past costs. Delayed gratification, the ability to wait can lead to better financial outcomes. Postponing immediate pleasure for future benefits can lead to better financial health. Whether it's saving for a significant purchase or retirement, patience often pays off. Impulse control is at the core of sound financial management. Most of personal finance is self-control, not math. 16. Supply, Demand, and Market Pricing Fundamental economic forces determine the price of goods and services, not opinions or politics. The interplay of supply and demand is a fundamental determinant of market prices. Understanding these forces can offer insights into market trends and investment opportunities. 17. Money isn't good or bad, it's neutral. A prevailing myth in society is that money, in its essence, carries a moral weight. We've often heard phrases like the love of money is the root of all evil or, conversely, money can fix anything. Both viewpoints stemming from historical and cultural narratives oversimplify what money truly represents. Money, in its core form, is a neutral tool. It's a medium of exchange, facilitating transactions and serving as a measure of value. Assigning moral attributes to money is akin to labeling a hammer as good or bad. Just as a hammer can be used to build or destroy, money can be leveraged for positive and negative outcomes. Its morality is not inherent, but instead derived from how it's used. Consider philanthropy. Billionaires donating vast portions of their wealth to causes like education, healthcare, and poverty alleviation showcase money's potential for widespread positive impact. On the flip side, we've seen money misused for corruption, unethical businesses, or to further personal agendas at the expense of others. Moreover, our personal biases and experiences shape our perceptions of money. Someone who grew up in scarcity might view money as a symbol of security and success. At the same time, Another person who witnessed familial discord over wealth might associate money with conflict and tension. It's also worth noting that money's neutrality allows it to be universally accepted. Its value is standardized, though subject to fluctuations, and devoid of moral judgments, facilitating its primary function as a medium of exchange. In our personal and societal quests for financial literacy, we must dissociate money from moral judgments. Instead, we should focus on our relationship with it, our intentions, and our actions when managing, spending, or investing in it. By acknowledging money's neutrality, we can approach financial decisions with clarity, free from misplaced emotional or moral baggage, and use this tool to craft the narratives we desire for our lives and communities. Remember, capitalists use money to create businesses. These businesses create the products, services, and jobs that allow society to prosper. Businesses also create the jobs people need to get paid money to provide for their families. 18. Compound interest, the most powerful force in the financial universe. Compound interest is a financial concept that refers to the process where the interest earned on an amount of money adds to the original sum. Then that combined amount makes interest in the next period, and so on. In other words, compound interest is the interest on the initial principal, which also includes all of the accumulated interest from previous periods on a deposit or loan. Let's break it down with an example and some key points. Example, imagine you have $100 in a savings account that earns 10% compound interest annually. 1. First year, you earn 10% of $100, which is $10. 1. So, by the end of the year, you have $110 in total. 2. Second year, you then earn 10% on the total $110, not just your initial deposit of $100. 2. This gives you an interest of $11, totaling $121. 3. Third year, you earn 10% on $121, which is $12.10, totaling $133.10. As you can see, every year, you earn interest on the amount from the previous year, which includes both the original principal and the interest it has already earned. This interest on the interest makes compound interest powerful over the long term. There you have it, folks, 18 powerful lessons about the psychology of money that can transform your financial life. Remember, it's not just about making money, it's about understanding the psychology behind it. If you found this video valuable, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more insightful content. Thanks for joining us on this journey to master your money. Until next time, stay financially savvy.